avoid defining religion? If it's difficult to define religion, what about if we try to avoid doing so? Can we talk about religion without a definition? Trying to find a definition is almost like stepping through a quagmire. It's messy and difficult and unhelpful in many ways. So, one way we can try to avoid a definition is to talk about religion in a new and quite different way. That is the idea that it is not so much religion, it is religioning. Religion with an ing at the end. To talk about religion as a verb rather than as a noun. As something that is done rather than something that does. This might sound rather silly and strange because it is unfamiliar, but it draws attention to the fact that religion is not a thing, an object. It's not like a table or a chair or a house or a country or whatever it might be. It is not something that exists in the world as a thing in itself, as a noun. What religion is, very largely, is what people do. People live their religions. They practice their religions. Their religions are embodied in what they do. I will come back to this in a later discussion. People behave in religious ways. They embody their religions. They practice their religions in how they live their lives and in what they do. People do their religion in ways that they consider important or sometimes unimportant. To be religious is to do religion. It is about doing religioning. This is why I use this phrase. It draws attention to the way things are done. In fact, not as things, but as the process of doing. Religion is not a thing in a box, and it is not the box itself. Religion is the process of taking out the contents and using them. Reading books, singing songs, following certain types of behaviour. Is religion a universal term? Is religion something that everybody has or everybody does, at least across cultures, if not at the level of individuals? We have plenty of atheists in today's world, some pretty low-key and quiet, others who are very vocal, such as Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris. But it is often said that wherever you go in the world, you will find religion, in some form or other. People respecting the sacred, or having spirituality, or practising certain elements of their culture that look more or less like religion. But as we talk about this, we need to step back and acknowledge that we are using the English language. We are thinking in terms of the English word religion. You might say that the term was originally Latin, but the point is that like many Latin loanwords in English, its meaning is specific to how it is used now by English speakers, not whatever original meaning it may have had. The word religion has in fact been around for a long time in the English language, and over that time it has had different meanings. And most importantly, those meanings have been linked to the fact that most English language speakers, at least in the past, were Christians. The English language is intimately linked to the cultures of English language speakers, the English and other British, North Americans, Australians, all of which were historically Christian and largely Protestant cultures. Even though in recent decades the influence of Christianity has declined in many native English-speaking cultures, and conversely English has spread on a global level and is used by many non-Christians, despite this, historically the word religion has been shaped by the influence of Christianity on English-speaking cultures, such as in Britain and North America. We can think of the word religion as a prism or a magnifying glass for meaning. The word focuses our minds on certain things. We associate particular things with the word, and how that word has been calibrated, what the word makes us think about, comes to us from a Christian culture. Religion very largely derives from our understanding of religion through the prism of Christian understandings of what religion is or should be. So from this, we can ask two related questions. Do all societies have a word which we can translate easily or with difficulty into English as the word religion, with all the implicit meanings that term has to us? And secondly, regardless of whether they have such a term that can be translated, do all cultures have a range of practices, traditions, beliefs or attitudes that can be described 
by an English-speaking outsider as religion. With regard to the first question, do all cultures have a word that can be translated? If we look beyond English-speaking cultures, at other cultures and religious traditions, we have to recognise the basic problem of translation. Words in other languages focus their own meanings, which may or might may not be similar to what is packed into the word religion. So in Muslim cultures, there is the Arabic term deen, which is often translated as religion. In Hindu cultures, there is the Sanskrit-derived term dharma, and so on. But are these terms the same as what English language speakers call religion? The answer simply is no. Not all cultures or language groups have a word that translates as religion. Religion is not a universal term. And even as we talk about this, we enter another unexpected quagmire. Perhaps we could call it a minefield. Past generations of English language speakers have travelled the world asking the same question. Does this group or does that group have a word that can be translated as religion? But when this happened in the past, it was in the context of firstly colonialism and was largely tied up with the exploitation of those people for their land and their resources, or even their enslavement. And secondly, missionary work, to find the best way of translating the Christian gospel into a language that would help with those people's conversion. Both were highly political contexts, and we cannot easily ignore the consequences of those politics in today's world. After all, we might think we are more disinterested now about such matters, but the discovery that religion is not a word in everybody's language might make us jump to the conclusion that they are less civilised because they do not have a word for religion. Famously, the cultures of Native Americans, First Nations people of America, do not have terms that can be translated as religion. This, of course, does not mean that they are backward. Some might argue instead that it makes them more progressive. But it makes it more difficult for us to feel that we understand them, and it has consequences in the courts and people's legal rights if the idea of religion cannot be easily named and defined. In relation to the second question, of whether all cultures have something that we might call religion, regardless of whether they have a word to describe it, the answer we can give is also difficult. Not all cultures have things that can be easily labelled as religion. OK, we might find religion of some sort in their culture, if we are flexible about what we are looking for, if we are prepared to stretch most common understandings of the term religion. This is found commonly in Japan, where many people will tell Westerners that they don't follow religion even though they may do things that seem in some respects like religion, such as venerating ancestors. The problem may be that we are just trying too hard to find religion, and not taking enough trouble to understand what the people themselves think about what they are doing. The point of this is to get you to think about the difficulties of thinking and talking about religion. That it is not as straightforward as we might expect. Whether we are for or against religion, whether we have a particular religious faith or not, it is important for us to start from a point of recognising complexity. There are no simple answers because there are no simple questions. So is there any point in even using the term religion? Should we find ways of talking about this without using religion? Since using that term can often lead us to think we understand something even though we don't. Some people suggest we should use something else, such as the word ritual instead of religion. We have to use words. We can't stop using words to try and talk about the world we see about us. And in some cases, the word ritual may help us to understand other cultural activities better, and in other cases it might not. So what I suggest is that we do not drop the word religion, but instead we keep it and try to use it carefully. More importantly, we recognise that it has its limitations. That is what I am most concerned about, not so much whether we talk about religion and how and why, but rather, what are the limitations of using a term such as religion, and how can we learn a lot more if we recognise those limitations? And just to get started, those limitations are as follows. Firstly, of course, religion is an English language term. We should not assume that how we understand the term 
can be exported easily. And in fact, what we think of as religion is local, indeed parochial, to our part of the world. There is nothing wrong with that. It is just recognising our limitations. Secondly, whatever our religious outlook, belonging and faith may be, the term religion carries a lot of meaning from European and North American histories of Christian thought and practice. Religion carries a lot of baggage from centuries of Christian cultural life. One strong example of this is that religion is not only or primarily about faith and what people believe. Religion is about what people do, how they behave, and how they understand what they and others do. Third, religion is a meaningful term in much but not all of the world. Most Christians, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Sikhs, and many other followers or participants in particular traditions have an outlook that understands such traditions as religion, albeit in many different ways, marking off some of the things they do as a religion in their own particular ways, which might be different from how we understand religion. Fourth, the term religion is a starting point for understanding much of what people do. But that is only so long as we recognise we have to dig much deeper and understand the context, the particular, not the general. Fifth, much of what we talk about when we talk of religion can be called culture instead. I'm not saying the two terms are the same, and indeed the term culture is equally, if not even more, problematic. But in most societies, including our own, religion and culture do strongly overlap, and often it is hard to pick the two apart. And in cultural contexts, where there is no concept of religion, what we'll find is a lot of what may look like religion going on, in the form of culture rather than religion. And so the lesson to learn is really, be careful what you assume. Be careful what you say, listen and learn, and accept that reality is a lot more complicated than you'd ever think. And religion is just a small example of that.